FitTuber is a popular content creator from India and many of you may have watched his fitness videos earlier. I recently came across a video of his on the topic of Ayurveda and a healthy sex life. I was intrigued by the title, so I watched it. Having read many of the books on Ayurveda for my own research to debunk the pseudoscience, I wanted to see what FitTuber had to say in his video. As usual, I found the same cherry picking that people who promote pseudoscience indulge in throughout the video. So I went through the same books that he used as his reference and decided to bring out the real truth. In his video, he has talked about six rules which can protect our body and we can have an enhanced sex life according to Ayurveda. So I will use the same six points in order to debunk the claims. I will show you with references from the same books how Ayurveda holds a male-centric, non-scientific and useless notion of sexuality not to mention the objectification of women. So FitTuba, if you get to see this video, you will see what you missed out from these texts. So if you are someone watching my video for the first time and you want to learn about actual science and not pseudoscience, please do click on the subscribe button to watch more scientific and debunking videos. Throughout the video, he shows videos and pictures of him reading the books as if to make a point that he has indeed read those books. But he has not shown all the things that have been mentioned in those books, but instead has picked only the good cherries, leaving out the rotten ones. My approach is to show you exactly what is written in those books of Ayurveda. I am using the Charaka Samhita and Ashtanga Hridaya and Sushtada Samhita as my references. The same books he has shown in his video. Let us see his first point. Look, he starts by saying that the goal of the Vedas was never to convert every human being into a sexless being and celibacy was never forced upon and was always taken up voluntarily. So let us see how they actually looked at sex in the ancient books. The second chapter of Charaka Samhita on Vaji Karna itself starts with the aphrodisiacs before moving on to other diseases. That itself shows the importance the ancients had towards our basic instincts. In Charaka Samhita, a woman is called as the best of aphrodisiacs. It says a woman is the most lovable object of a man. Please note the word object and you will realize how women were treated in those days and how they should continue to be treated if one is to still keep faith in these texts. Susuda goes one step further and includes the words submissive and trained. Any text that treats women as mere objects endorses submission to men and has to be trained in today's world should belong in the yes trash can. That is not all. Look at this sentence from Ashtanga Hridaya. It describes an ideal female and ends it by saying that one may have sex as per his liking. His, not hers, not theirs, his. If this is not misogynistic, then I don't understand that word at all. And this isn't the end. Please see how the ancient texts treat women. You're not supposed to have too much faith on them and they should not be entrusted with secrets nor hold any position of authority. Only people whose wisdom is as outdated as these texts would even dare to think like this in today's times. And people think there is a lot of ancient wisdom in these texts. Yeah, right. Something that Fituba overlooked and I would like to point out is the age at which one can indulge in intercourse with women. Take a look at this passage from Charaka Samhita. A girl up to the age of 16 is called as Bala or child and the text prescribes for men to have sex daily with such a young girl in order to increase a man's strength. Do I smell pedophilia somewhere? A person having sex daily with a Taruni who is up to 32 years of age is set to decrease strength and having it with a middle-aged woman makes one get old faster. Please don't sweep this under the carpet by saying this was the custom in olden days and today's morality is different etc. This passage has been taken from the book that is taught in Ayurveda schools even today. Fituba then goes on to mention about Shukra which he mentions is much more than a mere reproductive fluid. The next statement is an explanation of the Shukra which is a potent energy that is present in every cell of the body since birth in the form of Ojas. Yes, the very sort of principle that you hear from any pseudoscientific claim. 
scientific sounding words such as potent energy which is present in every cell of the body. Is that DNA now? And why and how does it suddenly come into being at birth? What about the time when the fetus was inside the womb? Did it have no ojas? And what is this ojas? Can anybody see it or measure it? No, it is just another fancy word which supports the prehistoric notion of the three humors on which this pseudoscience is based on. Vata, Pitta and Kapha. Next on his video is the time and season for sexuality. He mentions that due to us indulging in sex at odd times causes diseases like fatigue, depression, infertility, premature ejaculation, erectile dysfunction and difficult menopause. Oh, such a lot of hot air. Can somebody please turn on the air condition? Is there any scientific backing for these statements? None whatsoever. Let us see what the texts have to say in this regard. As per the text and Fituba, winter is the best season for lovemaking and it has got nothing to do with the need for physical intimacy in order to provide warmth for each other. It is because that is the time that the non-existent kapha is much more dominant leading to more production of shukra. Yet another nonsensical statement with no scientific backing. Summer and rainy seasons are supposed to deplete our shukra. Any evidence or studies for it? Zero. Take a look at this table and then take a look at the textbook again. See this passage which says that men would have the desire to have intercourse daily and if suppressed it would lead to diabetes, obesity and looseness of the body, whatever it is. So if you have to abstain yourself for 3 days or 15 days during summer and rainy season, wouldn't you get obese and get diabetes? Maybe that is the reason why India is the diabetes capital of the world, the after effect of following age old wisdom and tradition. And this isn't all. Ashtanga says these bits about indulging in intercourse too. Of course, these texts ban DIY as well and then mentions these as possible side effects of suppressing the shukra. So tell me ancient sages, what should one do? To do or not to do? That is the question. He has also explained the age at which you can indulge in intercourse. Since his video was released in 2020, he has conveniently mentioned the age of sexual content as 18. No ancient Ayurveda text mentioned that my friend. In fact, it mentions the opposite as you can see here. If you can actually follow the age of consent laws in India, you will see that under the Indian Penal Code in 1860, the age of consent was at 10 years. This was raised to 12 in 1891, 14 in 1925, 16 in 1940 and 18 in 2013. Sexual activity with a girl below the prescribed statutory minimum age amounts to rape irrespective of the girl's consent. POSCO fixed the age of consent for both boys as well as girls at 18. So were the people from 1860 to 2013 not following the pearl of wisdom as Fituba says? I will show you another example of an English translation of Susrita Samhita where the translator has mentioned it as 16 since this translation was done in 1983. So it is a clear cut example of how people interpret ancient texts in with the current moral values. Moving on. He has also fallen for the menstruation is unclean theory by saying that the text mentions that sex during period is not permitted. Instead of mentioning the unclean theory, he has equated it to the doshic balance. Here is what the ancient texts actually say. With the current understanding of menstruation, it is time for the yogis to explain how having sex during periods leads to vision defects and makes one die faster. His next slide had me rolling on the floor with laughter. He could have at least bothered to google for facts before mentioning this in the video. It is a pity that people still carry unscientific notions that conceiving during your periods causes children with disabilities. While on this, I have a request for him and my viewers. Please do try and avoid the use of the word handicapped. Current ethics and moral standards does not endorse the word handicapped and instead uses these words to describe people with disabilities. His favorite text also mentions the avoiding of intercourse during new moon, full moon and eclipses and festivals. Is there any scientifically proven reasons for this? The notion that eclipses causes hormonal imbalances is as scientifically valid as homeopathy is. 
utter rubbish. You can understand the pseudoscientific phase of Ayurveda from just this one paragraph. Fituber later goes on to explain the things that you need to do after intercourse. The first being Nasya, a procedure which is highly unscientific. Whereas he has mentioned doing Nasya with ghee or badam rogan oil, Charaka begs to differ with him. The next step is to take a bath followed by drinking warm milk sweetened with jaggery in order to restore your shukra. I took a look at Ashtanga Hridaya and this is what is mentioned there. Please have a read. I think he forgot to read about the meat soup and the sura which is alcohol by the way. This is a medical text that we are talking about right here. A medical text that prescribes alcohol to replenish our shukra. It is a perfect face palm moment for people of science. Now comes the most important part of the video, shukra enhancing foods. Boy, I was waiting for this segment eagerly. He has mentioned a lot of things to be eaten as aphrodisiacs such as ghee, lassi, paneer, fruits, dry fruits, etc. I think here too he missed out on some key ingredients that Shushada, Charaga and Bagbada have mentioned in their texts. Let us take a look at some of them. Adding cock's meat makes a man behave like a horse in bed and meat soup from peacock, swan and partridge makes him very bullish. Wait, there is more. Goat testicles in buffalo meat soup would also do the trick. And take a look at this and remember this before you take ghee with milk. And if you are a person who is not suffering from the disease called vagina, which affects most married men and you want to indulge in more than one woman, this enema made by boiling testicles of bull, goat and pig should be mixed with honey, ghee, rock salt and common salt and lavishly applied through your behind. Be thankful for modern science and the blue pill that you don't have to go through such processes these days to enhance your powers. And I think he forgot to read the bit about taking sparrow's meat along with milk and hence that does not get a worthy mention in the video. Adding cock's meat with crocodile semen, yes, you heard that right, makes a person lose his sleep and his organ is ever stiffened. Wait, it is not just crocodile but the semen of these animals too makes one strong as a horse in bed. But what if you are not the horsey kind and want bigger and better sex? Well, how about an elephant? Here you go. Reminds me of this character from a famous comic series. In this video, he has mentioned that alcohol diminishes the shukra. However, Charaka and Bhagbada have different opinions by the looks of it. They have mentioned the ways of indulging in alcohol very clearly. Of course, don't forget being massaged by beautiful maidens while you sip that drink. Cheers to the yogis. The video then goes on to mention various sexual guidelines that one needs to follow as per Ayurveda. Let us look at some of them from the same text. First up is a description of a man who doesn't have a child. How are vaginal diseases caused? Ever heard of a term itching to have sex? Here is why. Of course, the comedy doesn't end there. Here are some passages on pregnancy and childbirth. The steps that you need to take in case of an obstruction to the fetus in the case of a childbirth makes one wince in pain. The bizarre technique of fumigating the woman's private parts with a peel of a black snake and then subjecting the poor woman through other methods of torture while she is in pain to deliver a baby is probably the most inhuman thing that I have ever read. Sadly, our rich and varied tradition called as Ayurveda recommends it. While on the topic, here are some more medicinal wisdom from the ancient yogis which I am sure will be an eye-opener for you if you haven't read these texts. What I found really interesting was the studious way he has shown himself reading the texts on the video and the immaculate way of taking notes and marking underneath the text. However, as you have seen here, he has most certainly dozed off or skipped some crucial points from the very same text. Of course, the video ends with him promoting a protein powder for people interested in maintaining fitness. Makes me wonder if all those things were hidden to promote this vested business interest. My intention is not to defame the fit tuber who is in fact much fitter than I am and has more viewers on his channel. However, my intention was to bring the reality of ancient wisdom in black and white for everyone. When I quickly glanced through his channel, I found that most of his videos are based on unscientific principles and yet 
as with any pseudoscience promoting videos they have a lot of takers i will expose more of the pseudoscientific videos as i get time i hope you understood some of the things from the ayurveda text that we so proudly endorse as i mentioned in my previous video on ayurveda this shastra is not just about medicinal plants and foods as wrongly conceived by the majority of people it contains the most absurd and the most ridiculous concoctions made out of various animal parts and this is not all these ancient texts contain many many more such outlandish concoctions and techniques that would make you squirm in your seat i guess you've had enough for one day anyways but i will be back soon with more perils of wisdom from charaka shushuda and vagbada until then it's bye bye from pale blue thoughts